Hello, Irving engineers. This is Miss Marshall, and I am so excited that we are starting our aviation unit. As you're watching this video, one of a couple different circumstances might be applying to you. You are either in Mr. Brown's Engineering 2 class, in which case you are doing this unit a little bit independently since Mr. Brown is out. Two, you might have covered this information in class, but be watching this video for a refresher. Either way, as we're watching it, I'm going to ask questions as though we were in class, and I'll encourage you to think of the answers like we were about to share it in the class chat or through raising our hands. So with that, y'all, let's get to it. As we look at the word aviation, what we're studying this unit, what I want us to start off by doing is think about what does this word mean? How would you define it? If it helps, maybe think of words that sound or look similar. Some words that I think of when I see aviation are words like aviary and avian. Both of those words are related to birds, and that's because they all come from the Latin avis, which means bird. So all of this, avian, aviation, aviary, related to birds, and what do birds do? They fly. And so that's what a lot of people think aviation is. It's all about flight. And if that's what you said, you're on the right track. Aviation is specifically the operation of an aircraft. So flight, but related to these things. So as we look at this and as we go throughout this unit, we're going to look at aviation and focus on the forces, motions, and parts of aircraft, as well as the history behind them. Speaking of the history, let's start there. Do you know anything about the start of aviation? Have you ever heard anything about the first flight? Do you have any idea who did it? where they were, or when it was. If you said or thought anything about the Wright brothers, you were correct. You were in fact right. So back in 1903, the Wright brothers were the first to successfully fly a plane. And they took their first successful flight all of 120 feet. Throughout that entire day of December 17th, they took turns and spent so much time practicing their flying. And each time they got a little bit better and a little bit farther, and their longest flight at the end of that day was a whopping 852 feet. Now this is the start of what many believe to be modern aviation with the planes and the aircraft that we are used to seeing today. But people have had their heads and sometimes the rest of their bodies in the clouds for hundreds of years. In fact, the first recorded uses of kites date all the way back to 400 BC. Leonardo da Vinci had sketches of his flying machine in the 14 and 1500s. And the first actual manned flight, a well, human using a glider, happened in the 1700s. But when it comes to propelled aviation, or something called a heavier than aircraft, that happened in 1903. As we look at some history of aviation fun facts, I do want us to look at the progression of things. So in 1903, the Wright brothers had that first flight. And all of 16 years later, they went from 852 feet to the first nonstop transatlantic flight, which means they got all the way across the ocean. And that happened in 1919. Now that flight took 72 hours, which is an incredibly long time to be in an airplane. And in the past hundred or so years, Flight and aviation have come such long ways. In fact, in 1969, the United States Air Force began operating what are called C-5s. These are cargo planes that have a length of 143 feet. So the length of this one plane is longer than the entire Wright Brothers first flight. That's pretty cool. And similarly, about 100 years later, we had the fastest transatlantic flight, which traveled from New York to London in just under five hours, so a small fraction of the time. So the reasons why we were able to make such huge improvements in aviation is because our engineers studied things like the forces behind flight. Now, on your own time as you're going through this PowerPoint, there is a really nifty video that you can watch here that explains some of these forces using paper airplanes, but I'll go ahead and explain them using a nifty diagram instead. 
As we look at this diagram, there are four main forces that act on an aircraft. The first force is the forward force, and we call that thrust. That is the forward motion that keeps the plane moving in a forward direction. Acting opposite thrust, we have drag, and that's kind of our frictional force that's slowing us down. So we know that air isn't just nothing, it is particles and molecules that as they rub up against the edges and the outside of our plane, they slow it down some, and that creates that drag. In the upward direction, we have lift. And honestly, while no one can fully explain what creates the lift of an airplane, it is there and it gets us off the ground. Acting in the opposite direction of that, we have weight, which is the force of gravity acting on the plane. Now, in order for our plane to get off the ground and stay off the ground, these forces do have to be balanced. Or, if they're unbalanced, we have to have more thrust and lift than we do weight and drag. Otherwise, our plane's not staying in the air for very long. So as we go through this, think to yourself, what are some ways in which planes create or maintain thrust? Looking at this picture, can you think of one? Meanwhile, as we look at drag and we think of that drag, what happens if there is more drag than thrust acting on our plane? Similarly, as we think of lift, what happens if there's more gravity than lift? As we think about all of these forces, and again, our scientists and engineers who develop planes and develop these aircraft are constantly working on ways to be more efficient in our construction in order to maximize the forces we do want, thrust and lift, and minimize the forces we don't, weight and drag. Some of the ways in which we do need these forces, though, are related to the motions of our plane. So when you're in a plane, it doesn't just go straight up, straight down. It does have to navigate all around so you can get to your desired destination. So our aircraft has several different types of motion, and we control things like the drag in order to create these motions. The three main types of motions that we see in an airplane are roll, pitch, and yaw. And looking at the GIFs on the screen, you can see an example of each. Roll is when the wings tilt to the left and the right. So you can see kind of like the airplane is starting to roll down a hill, it's tilting to the left side, then to the right side. And you can imagine yourself kind of rolling over like you're rolling in bed or again, rolling down a hill. You can see in this animation as well, there are these little flaps that are moving up and down and they are moving that air and creating more drag in, on specific sides of the plane, and that's what's helping to create that motion. The next motion, pitch, is the up and down motion of the nose of the aircraft. So the front of the aircraft, that's our nose, and as it pitches up, it moves up, and as it pitches down, it moves down. You can also see there are some different flaps, these are in the back, that are creating additional drag that controls that movement. The final motion is the yaw, which is kind of that left to right swivel motion. So almost like you're sitting in a swivel chair and just going left to right, left to right. Controlled by yet another flap on our plane, again, redirecting that air and causing more drag, causing our plane to move. Now these motions, again, our scientists are controlling the forces by controlling the parts of the plane and therefore controlling that motion. So as we look at the parts of the plane, there are several different kinds of planes and they're all gonna have so many different parts to them. But some basic parts that almost all planes have in common are these. So some of the flaps that we just saw include the ailerons. These right here, they control that roll motion which allows our plane to roll one wing over the other and kind of do that barrel roll motion. They're located on the wings, which is another basic part of our airplane. We also, in the back of our plane, have our vertical fin, which has a rudder. It's similar to what you might see on a boat, and as that rudder moves, that creates our yaw, so that left to right swivel motion. There are also horizontal stabilizers on the tails of most planes. 
these have what are called elevators, and as those elevators move up and down, they control the pitch. The other basic parts of our plane include what's called the fuselage, or the main body of our plane, as well as some kind of propulsion method. In this image, it's a propeller, but in other planes, it might be an engine or even a jet thruster. Now, all this being put together, I've thrown a lot of terms at you and a lot of basic information on aviation. And from here, y'all get to explore. So what we've got for you is we have an activities menu. And the rest of this unit is going to be very student directed as you work your way through this menu. Now, a couple of notes, all of our engineers are going to be completing three activities to continue exploring the history and physics of flight. So everyone, all of us, we're doing three things. For the at-home engineers, those of you who are staying completely virtual, you are going to complete everything at home and you will take the pictures and the videos that you need to to turn it in and you get to pick the order on which you work on these assignments. For our hybrid engineers who are going to be in the school one day a week and at home for the others, Mr. Brown and I suggest that you work at your quote unquote entree assignment at home and you work on those side dish assignments when you're in person. Those side dish assignments are on the computer or on paper, whereas that entree assignment uses some of the materials that you picked up at school. And since those materials are delicate, we do not suggest bringing them back and forth. So let's take a look at this menu. The entree, which everyone is doing, is our Delta Dart model plane. So if you picked up your activities, you got that white, or sorry, clear plastic bag, which had all of these wood parts in it. That is our model plane that we get to construct, and that is the big project that all of us are doing. From there, you do have a couple of choices, as you get to pick one side dish A and one side dish B. Side dish A, we have two options of two different timelines. One is a general history of flight timeline, and the other is a timeline of the life and flight of Amelia Earhart, who is a incredible female pioneer in aviation. So you're going to pick one of those. And then you get to pick one from side dish B, which is making a poster. One poster further exploring and explaining the four fo forces that act on aircraft, or one poster that further explores and explains the parts of an aircraft. As we look at these in more detail, first of all, let's look at our timeline because three assignments is a lot. And especially with it being student directed, we want you to have checkpoints so you can check your progress and make sure you're on the right track. So first things first, we're gonna be looking at this. It's probably Tuesday, March 23rd, or maybe Wednesday, March 24th. So we've got a couple of classes before spring break to get started. The week back from spring break on April 9th, we have our first checkpoint. On April 9th, you should have at least one of those assignments totally done. By the next Friday, April 16th, that's your second checkpoint. Again, everything should be done. By the following Friday, April 23rd, everything should be done. So your entree and both side dish assignments done by this date, though we'll probably make the due date the following Monday. So now looking at these assignments in more detail. For that Delta Dart model plane, you are going to need the contents of that flight kit. Again, that is that clear plastic bag, those materials that you picked up from school. You'll also need some materials from home, something like scissors and glue and potentially a piece of cardboard if you have it or just a flat surface that you don't have to move. In order to build this model, you're actually gonna be following along with a guest teacher from Hayfield Middle School. He goes through and constructs that Delta Dart plane in six different video segments, so you get to watch those and follow along as he explains how to construct it. You can also look at the instruction manual that is included in your flight kit as you work on this assignment. When you go to turn it in, there will be a Schoology assignment, excuse me, there will be a Schoology assignment called the Delta Dart that you will fill out a template including three pictures, a video, and the answers to three reflection questions. For your side dish options, again, side dish option A, if you choose to do the history of flight timeline, you will be using the internet to create a timeline that shows the history and the evolution of flight. 
your timeline is going to have at least 10 important dates on it, and each date should have an image as well as a brief explanation that includes the who, the what, the where, the when, and why that event was important. It's up to you how you want to make this timeline. You can make it on a Google Slides or a Google Doc. And when you turn it in, you're going to attach that slide or doc to the Side Dish A assignment in Schoology. As for the websites you can use, it's really anything but Wikipedia. We did give you some options and some resources here on the side, so these are all linked to relevant sites about the history of flight. If you do choose to go with the Amelia Earhart timeline, similar, you are creating a timeline that shows the life and accomplishments of Amelia Earhart, and again, including those 10 important dates. Each important date should have that image and the explanation that includes who, what, where, when, and why it was so important. And again, you get the choice to make it as a slides or a doc. Again, there are some links over here, and you can use any site except for Wikipedia. As we move on to Side Dish B and your choices of poster, if you choose to go with the Forces of Flight poster, you should be making this on actual paper, so a chance to not stare at a screen. You're going to be using paper, colored pencils, markers, whatever you want to make it look nice. Though remember, I'm never going to judge you on the quality of your artwork, so don't fret if you're not an artist. But do try your best, and using what we learned in class just now, as well as your own research, you're going to create an educational poster that explains those four forces of flight. Each force should be labeled and defined with one to two sentences, and then show the direction of the force. You are also going to briefly explain what happens if the forces are unbalanced, so you can think for this one if you have too much drag or too much gravity, what's going to happen to your plane. Your poster should be neat and colorful, but again, it does not need to be a museum quality work of art. Once you finish making your poster, you'll take a picture of it and you'll turn it into the side dish B assignment in Schoology. And again, some resources here to help you out. Should you choose to do the airplane parts poster, similarly, you're gonna make the poster by drawing it on a sheet of paper, using what we learned in class, as well as your own research, create an educational poster that shows and explains the parts of an airplane. You do have a word bank for this one, so I want to see you include all of these terms in your poster. Each part should be labeled and defined, and again, one to two sentences explaining what it does or how it changes the motion, hint, hint, hint. And your poster should be neat and colorful, but it does not need to be that museum quality work of art. And again, resources to help get you started. As you work through these assignments, if you have any questions, remember that you can always ask me, you can message Ms. Marshall, or you can ask Mr. Brown, though he might be a lot slower to respond. But with that, y'all, enjoy the aviation unit and enjoy this student-driven unit uh, as you work through our menu.